Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. So this is actually a book that I thought I DNF'd as a child. Actually rereading it, I think maybe I did get to the end of it. But uh, still, it was pretty good. I've just remembered that. Because <laughs> uh, I sent a copy of this, the same edition, to Anthony, uh, Anthony Andrews. Because basically, I bought a few of these like this, and then I managed to get the whole box set really cheap. And he went to read the blurb. And this doesn't have a blurb on it, so I'm going to have to get a blurb from elsewhere, bear with me. Here we go, I found it on Amazon. Okay, so the blurb. One of the best loved adventure stories ever written. Treasure Island's timeless tale of pirates, lost treasure maps, mutiny and daring do, what a word, has appealed to generations of readers ever since Robert Louis Stevenson penned it in 1881 with the claim, If this don't fetch the kids, why they have gone rotten since my day. But more than just a children's classic, the novel is considered to be one of the greatest feats of storytelling in the English language, with characters such as the unforgettable Long John Silver becoming part of the cultural consciousness. Treasure Island is a coming of age story that will captivate both adults and children for as long as stories are told. And I read this as part of the buddy reads I've been doing, so I read this with Brian from Brian's Bookshelves, Alexandra who uh, is at Alexandria Reads, sorry, at Alexandria underscore Reads on Bookstagram. We have Margaret, Margaret the Word Nerd here on Booktube. Elizabeth Green, who is a dyslexic muggle. We have Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly. We have Lou, Lou Gaither, one of my longtime viewers. Shout out to Lou, as always. Megan Unthank from Brushing Up Bookends. And then Anthony Andrews from Anthony Andrews. So, this was a big old buddy read. So, my thoughts about it. So, I remember when I, f you know, first tried to read this or whatever. I read the first third or so, maybe. Basically, all of the bit in the pub. Which, which name, I can't remember now. Maybe I'll see it as I flicker through. The Admiral Bembo. I think that was the name of the pub. So, I read... All of that part of the Admiral Bembo, and then they go off and get ready to make their trip to sea. And then that's when I first stopped reading it the first time I read it. But apparently I must have reread it in its entirety afterwards, because as I was going through it, I was like, I remember this, I remember this, I remember this. Now I do think it's one of those weird books where the start is stronger than the end. The start is strong, the middle is okay, and the end got kind of weak, and I sort of lost interest. However, I mean, I did enjoy it enough. I will also be reading Muppet Treasure Island. A few other different bits that I tabbed out that I wanted to mention specifically. I also, I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do a voice here. Just because the Doctor in this, the Doctor right at the start, is an absolute legend, underrated character. So he, he goes, were you addressing me, sir? Says the Doctor. And when the ruffian had told him, with another oath, that this was so, I have only one thing to say to you, sir, replies the doctor, that if you keep on drinking rum, the world will soon be quit of a very dirty scoundrel. And then he, he, he has another great quote. He goes, uh, If you do not put that knife this instant in your pocket, I promise upon my honour you shall hang at the next assizes. Which I believe are assize, assizes are like a... Like a... Like a like a trial almost but like a public trial is that correct I don't... hey google what are assizes okay you probably couldn't hear that because google is very quiet for some reason but basically she told me that the most commonly used paper size in the world is a4 okay here we go a size according to uh google dictionary funny enough a court which formerly sat at intervals in each county of England and Wales to administer the civil and criminal law. In 1972, the civil jurisdiction of Assizes was transferred to the High Court and the criminal jurisdiction to the Crown Court. Alright, here we have some more absolute insanity from the Doctor. So, uh, Oh Doctor, we cried, what shall we do? Where is he wounded? Wounded? Oh, I've forgotten the voice. Hang on, what was his voice? It was like, Wounded? A fiddlestick's end! Oh, fucking lost the voice. How did his voice go? Oh, well, anyway, the doctor goes, Wounded? A fiddlestick's end, said the doctor. No more wounded than you or I. The man has had a stroke as I warned him. Now, Mrs. Hawkins, just you run upstairs to your husband and tell him, if possible, nothing about it. For my part, I must do my best to save this fellow's trebly worthless life. And Jim here will get me a basin. So Jim here gets him a basin. <laughs> and then we have the marvels of 19th century medicine. And now, Master Billy Bones, if that be your name, 
we'll have a look at the colour of your blood. Jim, he said, are you afraid of blood? No, sir, said I. Well then, said he, you hold the basin. And with that he took his lancet and opened a vein. A great deal of blood was taken before the captain opened his eyes and looked mistily about him. Can we just... He's just had a stroke. Surely bleeding the man is not going to help. And spoiler alert, this happens right at the start anyway. It doesn't turn out too well for that, that dude anyway. But the doctor, for all I know, the doctor lived a long and a happy life, so that's good. We have a quote here from a... I believe it's a letter as well. I wished a round score of men, in case of natives, buccaneers, or the odious French... And I had the worry of the deuce itself to find so much as half a dozen, till the most remarkable stroke of fortune brought me the very man that I required. Yeah, he's talking about Long John Silver, who turns out to not be such a good dude. They end up in Bristol, which, as I was reading it, literally just made me think of Hannah Tay here on Booktube, because that's where she lived. We have this great, this other great patch of dialogue here as well. Just, I just love a lot of the old school, just dialogue in it. Trelawney, said the doctor. Contrary to all my notions, I believe you have managed to get two honest men on board with you. That man and John Silver. Silver, if you like, cried the squire. But as for that intolerable humbug, I declare I think his conduct unmanly, unsailorly, and downright un-English. Here is a classic example of the English being apologetic as well. So this, is a, this guy has been shot. And it goes, uh, after a while of silence, he said he thought somebody might read a pair. He says, after a, what, after a little while of silence, he said he thought somebody might read a prayer. It's the custom, sir, he added apologetically. And not long after, without another word, he passed away. Now that is how you die like an 18th, 1800s Englishman. He goes around on the ship looking for food and he finds um, some biscuits, some pickled fruits, a great bunch of raisins and a piece of cheese. And then we get something happening as well, which I'd been wondering about all the way through, because I was like, how do they keep their gunpowder dry when they're like in the sea and the rain and stuff? Um, and um, that, that is covered, so we have here. Before he could recover, I was safe out of the corner where he had me trapped, with all the deck to dodge about. Just forward of the mainmast, I stopped, drew a pistol from my pocket, took a cool aim, though he had already turned and was once more coming directly after me, and drew the trigger. The hammer fell, but there followed neither flash nor sound. The priming was useless with seawater. I cursed myself for my neglect. Why had not I, long before, reprimed and reloaded my only weapons? Then I should not have been, as now, a mere fleeing sheep before this butcher. And then I love it as well, the parrot gets used as a lookout. <laughs> and Stevenson describes this parrot as like a better lookout than any human could have been. Which is, is true. I mean, he, he does do a good job. The only other thing I want to mention is that this edition has some beautiful, like, woodcutty style illustrations, which also made this a lot more fun to read. Here we have Long John Silver on his crutches. It said he actually, uh, he wore his crutches around like a thing that held it around his neck as well, so that he could still use his two arms and, like, lean on the crutch. So that was quite interesting. All in all, I did enjoy it. It's a shame that it just did feel like a reread to me, which presumably was because it was a reread. But, um,. Uh, it also lagged here and there as well a bit, but overall I'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of 5 It was enjoyable enough, and you know, it's a classic uh, uh, for a reason really. I'm glad I read it in this beautiful edition I doubt I'll ever reread it, but I do now want to watch Muppet Treasure Island and sing all the songs There was one where it was like there's got to be something better Something better. There's got to be something better for you and me. You can tell I play guitar and sing, can't you? Anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.